Yes. Wow. One, two, three, go live. Okay, so... I know. It <laughs> it's not just you and me anymore. <laughs> it says you are live on YouTube. Okay, perfect. So, all set. Excellent. Hello, everyone. And uh, I have my friend, Alejandria from Canada. She's joining me from Canada, right? If I'm not correct. If I'm correct, yeah, yes. Uh, I'm not yeah. correct. <laughs> so... Uh, it's lovely, you know, it's really excited to have you over here and we have all our friends do let me know in the chat where you're joining from and uh, let me just quickly fire up my PowerPoint presentation as usual. So, no just bring it, share, perfect, I hope you can see my presentation. Yes, I can see your screen. Yes. Perfect, you can see my screen, that's great. And... Yes. <laughs> okay, so here I'm trying to connect. Wow, so we have people joining from Denmark. Uh, Mehdi is joining from Denmark, and um, we have people from Abu Dhabi as well. Wow, from Saudi Arabia, Jamil, welcome. Uh, nice to see you here, brother. Uh, joining from Saudi Arabia. Wow. Hobart. It's very close by, you know, by the way, it's very close to my place where I'm staying here. Okay. So let's begin. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome. Welcome to Microsoft Excel Power Platform Meetup uh, Saudi Arabia. And today we, I have my friend from Canada. I'm quickly going to introduce about to you and, and then I'll leave a stage to introduce more in detail about herself. So, in today's meetup, we have a special guest, but just quickly wrapping up about myself. I hope you know me. Uh, I'm Farah Sheikh, founder of ExcelExciting.com. Uh, I run a meetup, Saudi Arabia, uh, Microsoft Excel and Power Platform. I'm Microsoft MCD, Microsoft MVP, uh, Microsoft Innovative Educator, Microsoft Office Master. So my passion, as you know, is to gain knowledge and share knowledge about Microsoft Office application. And with my friends, I call, I, I should call this as, as an Avenger, you know, for uh, who are coming and giving their amazing superhero knowledge and uh, sharing with the community. And it's really lovely, you know, people coming up and sharing their knowledge and giving us some easier and quicker trips and tricks about Excel, how we can manage it. So, these are some of our past meetup which has taken place and uh, definitely you can always go and check up in, you can scan the QR code and you can definitely go and roll up and check that. We also have some meetups coming from 2021 as well. So you can check those also in the same playlist. And as I announced last time that our meetup have reached around like 1,300 members. So that's a uh, lovely numbers, you know, thank you everybody. Thank you for joining in and thank you for being the part of this lovely community. And we have some upcoming meetups, which we are planning right now. It's uh, in November because remember I'll be traveling to Excel days for Bulgaria. So where I'll be speaking about power, about automation with office scripts and power automate. So, I'll be just looking for the schedule, how best I can manage for the number, but definitely for December, we have some speakers which we are in discussion and stay tuned and connected on the meetup. So you will get the notification uh, about our next meetup. And from the community, if somebody would like to share the knowledge about Microsoft Office, Power Platform, Azure, uh, I would really encourage them, please come up and write me back and excel exciting at the outlook.com. I'd be really happy to um, welcome you over here for the meetup because we wanted to learn also from the community what they have, uh, what you are having also on that and we can, we can equally gain and share the knowledge. And in fact, um, Alejandria have contacted me through this slide only she had wrote me back and sent me a message saying that Fraz, I would be really interested to present at uh, the Saudi Arabia Power Platform Meetup. So uh, today our hot seat guest is here, Ali Handia. So 
Alejandra, I will leave the floor to you. You can please introduce about yourself. Please let us know uh, about you. And uh, stage is yours. Thank you so much. Thank you everyone for being here. I really appreciate your taking the time and join uh, my presentation. I'm, I'm very glad, I'm very thrilled and honored to be here. Thank you so much. So I prepared some slides, if you don't mind, let me start sharing my screen. So, just in here, let me start the presentation. And let me switch this. Uh, perfect. Okay. Um, I hope you can see my screen. I don't yes, see that can. over here. But if you can, perfect. Uh, because for some reason I had, okay, perfect. Now I can see. I am over here. Perfect. Thank you so much. As Farah said, I'm from Canada. My name is Alejandra Corbat. Today I'm going to present how Power Query has transformed my routine at work. It has been amazing. So I want to share a little bit of that with you today. So I'm a CPA. I'm a certified Excel expert. Uh, expert. I have been working with Excel for over 20 years. I'm currently working as a budget analyst. I have a YouTube channel where I love to share um, tips, tricks, and some cases, some examples, how I use Power Query. Uh, I have two channels, actually. I have one in English and one in Spanish. I have a live session every Saturday um, at 8 a.m. Mountain Daylight Time. It's probably uh, 5 p.m. your time for us. So I have every Saturday live session around an hour and I bring a new topic, a new form, uh, function, uh, I answer questions. So you are very welcome everyone to come and join me every Saturday. I do the same on my channel in Spanish and I do that on Tuesdays uh, at night, my time, 6.30, 6.15 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time. So I, I invite you to join me one of those days. So I live with my cat Gasparin, the white one, and my cat Oli, the great uh, Tabby, and my dog Maya. Best co-workers ever, <laughs> best co-workers. So today, uh, I'm gonna agree, give you a very, very uh, brief explanation what Power Query is. What is the positive impact that Power Query has had with my work or at work, and in general in my life, right? Um, and I'm, I have some examples to share with you, so hopefully you find it use, useful, or um, you can find some new tips, new tricks there, or actually you can let me know if you find a better way to, to do what I do. You can contact me in LinkedIn, you can contact me as Alejandra Forbad, you can contact me in my channel, you can, uh, I have my Twitter account as Alejandra Horv, and my um, Instagram as I am Alejandra Horvath. So let's start. If I don't see any questions, uh, so I'm assuming everything is clear so far, so uh, let's Let's start. So for me, Power Query is through magic. It really can automate a lot of the boring tasks. So uh, based on Microsoft, Power Query is a data transformation and data preparation engine, which um, using Power Query, you can perform the extract, transform, and load uh, processing of data. So you're gonna get the data from your source. You're gonna transform it transform it through Power Query Editor, through the Power Query Engine, and then you are going to load the final product in, in your Excel spreadsheet, in your Power BI, uh, and other um, applications that use Power Query or have the Power Query Engine. So uh, the, the best part that I find about Power Query is that it doesn't damage my source. For example, when I'm working with Excel, if I want to work with a set of data, I bring it to Power Query. I get the data from Excel. It transforms that information, but my source is intact. My source is never modified. What is modified is what I'm doing in the Power Query editor. And then the, that modif modified data is the one that is loaded back to my other Excel spreadsheet or the same spreadsheet that what I'm working on. So that is amazing Excel, <laughs> so, right? So, uh, I know there are a lot of people who are fan of BBA, and I can see the point is amazing, but 
the thing that I find a little bit scary about VBA is that if something goes wrong with the macro, then the source of data can get damaged. With Power Query, you don't have that. So with Power Query, really, is very, you know, I am very safe when I'm working in Excel, and my source of data is never damaged, let's say. So, or at least so far. <laughs> so, so now, the Power Query language. Power Query Engine uses the scripting language behind the scenes for all the, query, uh, the Power Query transformation, the Power Query M formula language, also known as M. Also, um, it's my belief that M stands for um, mashup. So this language is extremely powerful, I have uh, seen, and it's a lot of fun to, to work with it. The more that you learn, the more exciting it becomes, and the more you want to work with. So uh, I believe, oh yeah, let's start with the demo. I brought for you some examples on how to automate repetitive tasks, tasks connect reports to one source of data, how to update information on those uh, reports just by clicking at one refresh, one or two clicks here and there. Also, all of this automate, uh, automation, all of these uh, connect, connections, all of these uh, transformations have allowed, uh, have allowed me to have more reliable information in a timely manner. So it gives me more time for me to look into really what matters, that is the information that I get from those processes and then focus and make decisions on that information, right? So, perfect, let's start. And I brought four examples. I'm not sure if I'm gonna have time to show the four examples, but at least I want you to be aware of what is possible or how it has impacted my work. So hopefully you can find something useful from there. So, uh, but let's, uh, let me just quickly check. I'm seeing here the comments that yes, I can make available. The files are gonna be available after the presentation. I will send them to for us so you will have them. Uh, you can practice so you can watch the video or this uh, recording again. So you will have access to that. Um, yes. Yes, that will be available. Perfect. I think that's all the information that I, I could see in the chat. And please feel free for us to interrupt me at one point if you have you see a, a question or you see uh, anybody just that needs to, uh, to stop me and I need to repeat something. So, excellent. So yeah. I'm going to start with the first example. So I prepared the queries already. I hope it's not going to be that uh, long but I want you to see what is going on and how it's prepared, right? So uh, I'm gonna go to data, uh, queries and connections. So you will see I, that's the area where I already have my queries. In this file that is called solved, I have one table where I have the name of the, co the current name of the columns and the new name of the columns because we're gonna use this table to rename the columns in our data. So that's the, the thing that we are seeing here. And this uh, pivot table that you see here is a final product. This final product is coming from the following files. So in here on my desktop, I have several folders. I have a folder that is called demo 2022 October 10, the folder one. That is the one that it has um, the vendor reports. I'm gonna double click there. And you will see that I have two files, two TXT files. I'm gonna open them, I'm gonna select them and I'm gonna open them. Here is the information that you have in those files. This is week two. And what is happening with this, this is my first query that I used at work. It's the first time that I was brave enough and tried to prepare a query. What is happening with these reports, these reports came every week. So the person who had to, to process this information needed at least 30 minutes every single uh, time that she received the reports, she needed 30, 30 minutes to transform all the reports that she received at that time. So the problem with that, uh, the problem with this is it doesn't have a title on the columns. So every time that she had to transform this in Excel, she had to organize and name the columns in a certain way so she could process some calculations. This is the unit cost. This is the invoice number. This is the quantity of the items that were invoiced. This is the city where it was invoiced to. 
the purchase order, the currency, and the week that that invoice was invoiced, right? So this is week two. You can see the items. Of course, for this presentation, it's very short uh, data, but in real life was quite long. So this is week one, same thing, same organization of, of, of the, let's say, columns. The columns are separated by the semicolon. So let me close this. And these are the two reports that I, I have here. Once I prepare the query, I have my information all transformed. This is the total cost. The total cost means that is the result of my unit cost times the quantity, right? So I just needed to know the total cost. I didn't know. To, I didn't know need to know the unit cost or the quantity. I needed to know the total cost. Let's see, I have week one and week two, week two. I'm gonna go to back one folder. I have additional information where I have other weeks. I'm gonna just quickly open them so you can see that it's exactly the same structure, same thing. So I'm gonna just close them. And what happens now that I've created my query, I'm gonna say control C, I'm gonna go to one, I'm gonna go to vendor report, and I'm gonna paste that information. Now, when I go here to my final product, that is solve one, I'm gonna just right click and I'm gonna refresh. And I, you will see that in seconds or in one second, all information has been transformed per city, per week. It gave me the total cost and gave me the year to date at this point, right? They accumulated for the seven weeks. So we are gonna develop this query very quickly. So let me just remove these files that I just pasted. So we are gonna go back to where we were before. I can go inside of the pivot table or I can go to data and refresh all. And then my information updates automatically, right? So as soon as I say uh, refresh, uh, all the calculation, all the information has been updated. So let's go and create this query from scratch. I wanna go to data, queries and connections, as I said, because I have this prepared. If you don't have this ready, what I suggest you can do is since we have the starting data, because as you saw, we don't have titles on the columns. Here is how the information is gonna be organized. It's gonna be organized in seven columns it's when it's broken down, right? When it's separated, that separator that semicolon, that's gonna separate the columns. So we're gonna have seven columns in total, and these are the titles that I want in that column. So when you open the file, you only will have this table. So what you can do is just right click, and you can uh, select get data from table range. I'm using Microsoft 365. You don't have this option. You can go to data and then you can find from table range, click there and the Power Query Editor will open. Of course, I have queries there because I already prepared them. But for you, when you start preparing this file or this query, you will have only one query that will be this. So let me organize my queries right here. I'm gonna just select the three. I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna say new group, and I'm gonna move those three queries or that, um, that query, uh, that parameter and that list. I'm gonna move all of that as solved. I'm gonna just leave it like that. Oh, it didn't go. If it, if it doesn't go automatically, just select them again and then drag them to the folder that you just created. Okay. So now I'm gonna rename this query as call names, column names live. And this is information that you will have for those um, names. I can remove the last uh, step. I don't want to change the type. That's, uh, I don't need it right now. So the next thing that I'm gonna do is I am going to, oh, oh what happened? For some reason, my, oh, here, it, it, it went away. <laughs> My editor went away. Excellent. Okay, now what I need to do, I need to transform this into um, a list. So I need to tell Power Query that this, I need to create a list to say, this is the old name, this is the new name. This is the old name, this is the new name. And I'm gonna do that very quickly. I can even do it here on the Power Query editor. If you don't have the, sorry, in the formula bar, if you don't have the formula bar uh, visible, you can go to view and you can check the formula bar. So once I'm here, I can even say, I want to transpose this table and I'm gonna say transpose a table. I'm 
Teams rules. Right here. I'm going to open parentheses and the table, the table is coming from the result of this formula, which is bringing the Excel workbook and the existing Excel workbook is bringing me the uh, table that is called, called names. And that information is within a column that is called name. And that information is uh, inside of the column content. That's all that is saying. And I say, okay. And now you can see that I have those, uh, the columns have become the rows. So now I have a pair of old name, new name, old name, new name, and so on and so forth. I will need this later on. That's why I'm preparing this information in this way. So now I need to find a way to create lists for this because this information I need to provide them later on as lists. So what I'm going to do, I can cre create a new step or I can even work within the, this uh, existing step and I can transform this into list. So what I can do here is I can take table to um, columns, Excel. So I'm gonna open parentheses and I'm gonna go to the end of the formula because it's asking me for a table. The table is coming, this table that you are seeing here and I'm gonna press enter. This has become a list. Now this information is gonna be ready to be used in my process. I need to have this pairs of information for my query that I'm going to develop. Okay, excellent. So one thing that I like to do, you can see here, I, I like to connect my information to a parameter. Why? Because once I have the information here in the parameter, anything that changed in my directory can be changed here. I don't need to modify the code to change the location of my files. So we're going to create a parameter. I'm going to go to home, manage parameters, new parameter. My parameter will be called my directory live. So I can differentiate from the directory, that, the other parameters that I have. And it's going to be my directory live. And I'm going to say this is going to be as text. And this is going to have the current value. The current value is where we have our file saved. Remember, it is in my desktop, in my folder demo, 2022, December, uh, October 10, within the folder one. And all my files for this specific report are inside of the vendor reports. Okay. I'm going to say, OK. Here I have my parameter with that information. Anytime that I change the location, I just need to change the information here in this parameter because what we're going to do is the following. So I'm going to go right click on the white part here. I'm going to say new query, file, folder. I'm, I'm going to bring the information from the folder that I just showed you. So I'm going to go to desktop, demo 2022, October 10, double click there. And I'm going to say one. And this is the folder where I have my files. I'm going to say vendor report. And excellent, I'm going to say open. Once I have this information here, you will see Control Shift Plus to zoom in. You will notice that I have the two files that I just show you, week one and week two. Let's transform. I'm not ready to combine and transform because I need to modify that information before I can combine it, right? So I need to go to transform data. And here I have the location of that file or those files, right? The location of the folder, let's say. That's the part that I'm going to replace with my directory, which is nothing but this exactly the same at this, at this moment. It's a, this is exactly the same information. So when you get the files and you save them in your folder, this part in here, uh, when you replace this for my directory live, that's the one that is going to have the right location. Here is when, where you are going to provide the location of the file where you, you are saving that file. OK, so now in here, nothing changes because it's exactly the same location. But now this is dynamic and the way that you can just change that information here and then your query will follow that information. Excellent. Now I can see that the information that I have in these files uh, is as binary within the content column. You will notice that there is more information here. If you want to prevent errors, you I recommend that you filter this information. Let's say 
first you transform this as, let's say, TXT. TXT. We are going to replace that information. I, what is that? Transform. Where's my transform? Right here. For uppercase, lowercase, doesn't matter. Just need to be consistency. This is lowercase. I'm going to select only the TXT file. So I'm going to right click, filter equals. So by doing this, I'm telling Power Query only bring the information that has the TXT files. Because if you save something as XLSX or PDF, then the query will break, right? So in this case, I'm fine with this. Uh, you can even say, I don't bring me any of the files that are open by saying that is, I'm gonna click here at the row, I'm gonna say text filters, I'm gonna say, does not begin with here, and does not begin with the tilt, that kind of wave, <laughs> that tilt that is just beside the number one in your alphanumeric um, uh, keyboard, this tilt is the one that you don't want to begin with. And that is because that means that the file is open. And if you bring that information, it's gonna double with the file that you have there, close the file that close the same information because the file is open. So let's say we prevented errors in the future. So always rename your, ste your steps. Uh, and it, it really helps quite a bit to go through the steps uh, in order and well identified because if later on you need to do something you need to go refer to, to some some step or some part of the process then you can always look into into that and then yeah. and then you don't have any issues later identifying what happened right so in this case i'm gonna start uh, renaming i know for for a matter of time Probably I won't have to rename all the steps or in all the examples, but I just want to show you how I rename it. I press the step, I select the step, F2 to edit, and then I rename the step. Once I'm here, what I can do is I can create a column and extract the information from this column, or I can create a new step here in Fx. I just press Fx. After the equal, I'm going to say table transform column. And I'm going to go here. Uh, transform columns, right this. And what I want to do, I want to bring the table. The table is coming from a previous step that is called not open. So I'm not bringing open files. That's why I put not open. And the transformation, I need to provide this as a list. I need to provide the curly brackets. And the name of the column that I want to transform is content. That's the column that I want to transform. What I want to bring in there, I'm going to say each. And I want to extract the Excel. Uh, actually, in CS CSV or TXT. You can use the same function for both. So you have CSV files or TXT files. You can use the same um, uh, function. So I'm going to open parentheses, and what I need to provide is the source. The source is coming from my column content, and the column content, I want that uh, the formula is start looking at every single line of that column. For that reason, I'm providing the underscore. From this function, it gives me the opportunity to provide some optional items, and what I'm going to do here I am going to provide the square brackets and I'm going to provide the delimiter. So by doing this, Power Query will separate the columns based on the delimiter that is the semicolon that I showed you earlier uh, when I show you the content of the files. So I'm going to provide the, um, the square bracket and I'm going to say delimiter, delimiter equals uh, in, within quotation marks and I'm going to provide the semicolon. This important. Perfect. And I think that's all the information that I need to provide here. I need to provide the um, uh, closing parentheses at the end of the formula. And now I have in here, if you remember, this one said binary. I'm going to go one step before. It said binary. And if you only show us the, the file, the name of the file, and how many bytes it has. So now that column has been transformed. And now we have the content of our CSV file separated by the delimiter that I told Power Query here, which delimiter to look for, and then separate the columns, right? So now that I have this information, I feel very comfortable to say, okay, perfect. This is exactly what I need. I can expand the column here. And actually, let me see. Uh, yes, let me go and create a new step. I'm gonna say Fx. And I don't like to expand the columns using um, this, uh, these arrows. What I'm going to do, I'm going to say table combine. I'm going to go create. I created another step. 
I go after the equals and I'm gonna say table combined. I'm gonna open parentheses, the table, the table is the table con uh, that is coming from my previous step and the table um, and the column that I want to provide is content. I need to provide this as a list and I'm gonna say enter. I close parentheses and enter. By doing this, I don't have a hard coded names for the columns. It has opened all the columns in that, um, on those, from those tables. And you can see that I didn't need to delete any of the other columns. I'm gonna go one step uh, before that. So here is where I have my information and here is where I have my tables. If I had opened the information from here, if I click at these rows and then I select the columns, then they get hard coded and all the other columns remain. By doing the table combine, I, it only combines, only grabs the information that is within the column, within the tables in the column that I indicated, in this case was the content column, and it combines all that information in one big list, let's say, of items, or in one big table of items, better said, and it doesn't keep any of the other columns that I had previously. So now that I have this information, I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller and I'm gonna hide this section a little bit. So we have a little bit more room. So now I can process my multiplications here. So I'm gonna, um, first thing, I'm gonna change the type. I'm gonna say, uh, click at this uh, square. I'm gonna change this as decimal, decimal number. And here I'm gonna change this one as a whole number. And I need to do it because I need to multiply these two columns. So I'm gonna select column three. Uh, and before I multiply, actually, and before I change the type, let's rename our columns. And for that, we're gonna need our list with the old name, new name. Now you can see why I needed this list. So I needed the column one, that is gonna be unit cost. Unit two, uh, uh, column two will be invoice number. Column three will be quantity and so on and so forth. So let's go and rename our columns next. So I can create a new step or I can create the step after, uh, or I can uh, add the formula just after the equal and I'm gonna say table, rename columns. So the table is a table that is coming from my, uh, from this uh, function, so uh, it's the result of the formula. I'm gonna say comma at the end and give me the renames as list. My list is coming from this call names live. So that's all that I need to provide there. I'm gonna close parentheses and I'm gonna say enter. Now you can see that we have unit cost, invoice number, quantity, city. We don't have any more uh, column one, two, three, and so on, right? So now we have the correct titles for our columns. Now let me change the, uh, the type as I should have done first. So I'm gonna change this for decimal and quantity, I'm gonna change it for whole number. Now that I have these two, I'm gonna select uh, quantity, uh, press and hold uh, the control key, select unit cost, I wanna go to add column, standard, I'm gonna say multiply. I can see that Power Query has created a name for that column as multiplication, as you can see here. So I'm gonna change that and I'm gonna call this cost. I'm gonna change the name there and now you can see that the column is named cost. I could have also double click at the column and rename that right there. But by doing that, it had created another step for me. Right, so I'm seeing that the time is flying, so I'm not gonna rename my steps right now, but as I told you, it's very important that you do because it really helps later on. So now that I have this information here, I can go and delete the information that I don't need. I don't need the unit cost anymore. I don't need the quantity anymore. I can keep the invoice. I can keep the purchase order. I can keep it. Uh, I don't need the currency. I'm gonna delete that too. So I'm, I'm pressing and holding the control key to select every single column. And I want to keep the week. So I'm gonna just press delete. And by doing that, I just keep the columns that I need. I'm gonna go to home, close and load, close and load too. And I'm gonna put the pivot table just beside beside the pivot table that I have here. But for now, first, I'm gonna create only a, a connection. So I select only create connection. I'm gonna say, okay. So by doing this, I'm very sure that it's not gonna create me uh, a tab per every single query that I had created, right? So in this case, this is the query that I just show you. I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna say load to. I'm gonna load these two as a pivot table. So I'm gonna load it just below the one that I have and I'm gonna say okay because these pivot tables are gonna expand to the right. 
So now that I have this here, I can just easily grab the information for the cost on the values, the week on the columns, and the city on the rows. So you can see I, can, I get exactly the same information that I had previously, right? So I prepare my queries correctly. So they, they match, let's say. So I'm gonna remove the decimals, I'm gonna add the thousand separators, and now you can see that the queries are working perfectly. So now let's do what I did at the beginning. Let me add the information that I have from the other weeks. So I'm gonna control C, and I'm gonna go to render report, I'm gonna control V, that information there. And now I go back to my uh, working paper uh, where we were uh, working in our file. I'm going to go to data and refresh all. And now you can see in seconds, both queries have refreshed with information that we have for the seven weeks. This is example one. You can see in this example, we save at least 30 minutes every single time that this person had to come and prepare the reports that come every week, right? So it might don't, probably doesn't sound that much, but when you add up 30 minutes every week for 50 weeks, don't even say 52 weeks, for 50 weeks, you are saving 25 hours. This means it's three working days. So you're saving three working days just by doing this. And it's really the query doesn't take that long. Of course, my first query had like 30 steps. <laughs> But now that I know better, like I have tried to optimize the steps and make them a little bit more efficient. But still, it didn't take that long and it can save three days of work. That is amazing. Yes, it's there, right? So I'm going to close this example. So this is an example one. Example two. I'm not going to go to the detail how I prepare this query. I recommend you to, uh, you visit uh, the uh, ILGARS uh, website. So I had a presentation there on September 30th, how connecting reports in Excel, right? So that is exactly where I show how to connect the reports to one source of data, only one source of data. So, yeah. so let me show you how the files come in um, folder two. Uh, one, two, here. So here I have the information for the sales for two zones. This information is coming in this uh, layout. Unfortunately, how this is presented, the files are not consistent. This has uh, five years. Yeah, this has the five years. It stores two, it starts in different spot. It has a title, it has three uh, empty lines. And this one has also, I believe, five stores. Yes, and store three, oh, so, sorry, five years. And store three start in another column. It has only one empty line. And this one has um, five store, five years as well. There are all the stores that have only three years, four years, let's say some two, for example. This one, uh, it doesn't have information for 2019 and it has only one store. Uh, only one, yeah, only one store, store four. So here I have this, this report that is coming for the sales. It, um, the operations is requiring to have these sales every every year or every six months, every, every certain time, because they want to compare the sales and the items, how the sales are behaving, let's say. So we have this, but also for audit, purposes, we need to prepare information for the sales and the taxes that were calculated for those sales in those specific years. And also by zones, because every single zone has a different percentage, different tax rate. So all of these reports are connected to one source of data. So the one for the auditors and the one for sales. Now look what happens when I go to additional information, I bring the information for zone three. This is zone three. This has two stores and it only has information for three years, store six, and store five has information for four years. So when I copy and paste, copy this, and I go to sales, where all my files are, where my query is grabbing information from, and for some reason, I didn't like it. Okay, let me just go again, control C, and then I go here, sales, control V. Okay, now look what happened with the taxes uh, or with the, the file for tax purposes. I see some one and some two. I can go to data, 
and I can say refresh all. And now you can see that zone three has been added for the years that were active. Zone two for didn't have information in 2019 because that store, store four, was closed. And now I have uh, information for store one to six. Excellent. So this is the, the file that we use for tax purposes. Let's see what happens with the report that we use for sales purposes. So here I have my uh, pivot tables that have only four stores, only two zones. And even when you look at the graphs, I only have two zones. I can say zone one, zone two, and I have the years that every single zone has. So if I select both zones, then I have all the stores and all the years that I have available in this file. Now let's go to data and I'm gonna say refresh all. And now you can see that I have available zone three, so I can select zone three as well. And now I have six stores in my graphs and I can go to my pivot tables. And now you can see that I have the three zones, I have the six stores. Both files were updated with the same source of data and you see that it didn't take any time. This is very helpful because when we are working with year end, with budget, with any information that needs to be provided to different areas in our organization, you can be certain that the information is matching. The problem how uh, before automating this was is that we had one change. There were more entries that had to be processed in our accounting system. And then we weren't sure if we updated all the reports that that change affected. So in this case, if I didn't update properly the tax report, then when the auditors check the information and didn't match with the books, then it's a big deal. And it's a lot of time to try to figure out why the report so much. So by doing this, you grab one source of data only, you, you connect your reports to that source, and then you can grab the changes at once, and you are certain that all the reports that are connected there and that have the same, so, uh, the same source, all those reports are gonna be correct, are gonna have exactly the changes that you need to have. So that's priceless. So, and I said, uh, if you want to learn more how this was connected, I recommend that you take a look to that uh, presentation. It, is, it took uh, around an hour. So for that reason, I cannot present how I prepare those queries right now, but I just wanted to make sure that you knew it, how it can help you, right? So that is very difficult to measure how much time you will save because it depends in every situation, but, the main thing with that is that you can have peace of mind knowing that that, is, that has been updated properly. You don't need to be guessing, right? So let me see what else do I have in here. So let me check. So four. Now we're going to go for the fourth example. Four? No, actually, I'm missing the third example. Give me just one second. Ah, no, that was the previous row. This is a very, very quick, a, a quick example. I'm going to just check. Uh, if we have any questions, uh, Omar, this works in, uh, I have Microsoft 365, but this works in any version of Excel that has, uh, uh, that you can grab or you can have Power Query uh, in. So for example, if you have a version of 2019, Power Query can do this, no problem. If you have a version of 2016, Power Query is included in the version that you have. But if you have a previous version, uh, it's my understanding that you have to download, download and add in for that. Um, I could assume you can do everything that I show you with any version. So if you are having troubles or you're having issues with it, uh, give me, uh, send me a message. Uh, you can contact me in LinkedIn and we can work it around. But you should be able to, to have access to this. You, sh you should be able to do this as long as you um, have a version, let's say 2016, that has Power Query in, or if you have previous versions, then you will have to download the app in and that you download that uh, from the Microsoft uh, website, okay? Yeah. Uh, who else is here or Minnesota? I'm wondering if that, this is Seagull. Uh, uh, someone is um, joining from Minnesota. But, but yeah, okay. Uh, uh, let me know if you're Seagull. <laughs> Seagull 14. Okay. The, uh, I have a question here. Uh, if I'm using any formulas from Excel 365, that I, no, I'm not using formulas. Uh, I'm just using Power Query. It's all in Power Query. 
So this is the best part. You, you should be able to do this with 2016. You just need to grab this with Power Query. And what I'm using with the graphs and with the other file, it was all uh, Power Query. And the graphs are just connected to the pivot tables. That's it. So you should be able to do that. Um, I think uh, I have another one here. Try to keep some of the columns. In the combined scenario, OK, uh, Christian Prifty, you are asking if instead of com combining, if you want to keep some of the columns from the previous steps, instead of combine, you can expand or you can combine and you can insert one of those columns inside of the tables before combining. So I recommend that you take a look to my ch uh, channel. I have shown there how to do that. So graph, uh, let me just open that file quickly. So everybody knows what, uh, okay, let me go here better. Uh, let me go to one and vendors, actually, what was that? Okay, so one in here. So let me go and show what uh, you were asking. So I'm gonna go to data, with some connections and this one. So, here before combining. Um, that's why you rename your steps <laughs> because then you can find them easily. <laughs> so, okay, perfect. So what Christian is asking is if he wants to keep some of these columns, let's say the name or, uh, or no, I don't know, maybe something else from here, maybe the path, if he wants to keep some of that when, before, after expanding these columns. So one option is to expand the columns and then it will keep the columns that you select and we will also keep all these columns and then you can delete them later on. But if you want to use the combine, then you will need to, before you combine, you will need to add a column inside of these tables. Let's say I, I'm gonna do this very quickly and I hope it works, fingers crossed. So let me duplicate the query just in case. So. And uh, from here, this is the combine. So from here, I'm gonna delete until end. And I'm gonna say delete. And here, I'm gonna say that I want to add this column to this table. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna create a new step. I'm gonna add a column inside of this content. So I'm gonna say table tra um, transform column. So I'm gonna transform this column content, I'm gonna open parentheses, I'm gonna go to the table. The table is uh, is coming from my previous step that is called custom, comma, I need to provide the transformation in a list. So in here, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna uh, say content, comma, uh, what I want to do, I want to add a column inside of the table. I'm gonna say each, I'm gonna say table, add column, I'm going to say open parenthesis. What is the table coming from? The table is coming from the column content. So I need to look at every single line on this column. So I'm going to provide the underscore. And now what I want this uh, to do, what is the uh, table at column, uh, comma. The name of the new column, let's say, will be file name. And then comma, and what I want to provide it, what I want to process it, I'm gonna say, oh, here the each is not gonna work. So I'm gonna just show you just uh, so you can see. The each is not gonna work because we're talking about two different environments. So I have one table here and I'm, I'm talking about a different table inside of this column. So even if I try to bring the column name, I'm gonna close parentheses, I'm gonna press enter. So I'm gonna go and uh, click beside the table here on the white part. And you can see that the new column was added and it says file name, but it brings an error. And that is because uh, I'm for that thing of the environment. So instead of each, what I'm gonna provide 
is what private query rec recognizes as a function, which is the parenthesis, the goes to symbol, and I need to provide a parameter. The parameter can be anything. And in this case, I'm going to say X. And that is just for Power Query to allow me to go inside of that table, transform it, and then bring the information that it didn't work for some reason. So let me, I'm going to right click in table and add as new query, and I'm going to see what the error says. So the error is saying that name in this table wasn't found, found. And if it doesn't work like this, then I think I know why. And Okay, it didn't like it when I gave transform columns. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna copy this part. I'm gonna control X. And instead of transforming the column, I'm gonna add a column doing this transformation. So I'm gonna say equal table add column. And the new column is coming from the, the table. It's asking a table that is coming from the previous step. I'm gonna say custom one. I'm going to say comma, the name of the new column in this table that I'm seeing right here on the top, the name of that uh, column uh, will be with file name. So the tables are going to have that. And then comma, and what is the uh, operation or what is the, what, I, what do I want to process there? I'm going to paste what I copied from the previous uh, try, let's say. So I'm going to add a column inside of those tables and a uh, and here I'm going to say that that is going to be on the column content. The, the, the tables are coming from that column content, and that new column will be called file name. That is this column. And now I'm going to use this um, to tell Power Query that this is a function, so it can bring the information from the name column, and I'm going to press Enter. And I think I gave something uh, wrong here. And this is closing. Oh yeah, because I don't need the, the curly brackets. Perfect. So I'm gonna go the end. And now you can see that it works. Now, by adding the column that is called with file name, I have been able to add Within the existing tables and the content uh, column, I was able to add a column that is called file name, and I have been able to grab the information that is on the name column from the table on the top, this column here. So by doing this, I was able to grab this information and put it inside of these tables that were originally from the column table, uh, from, from the column uh, content, right? So. Now that we have this information here available, I, I can combine now this column. So I can go uh, create a new step and I'm gonna say combine, take table combine, table combine right here. And I'm gonna combine this and now this is gonna be from the column with file name. I'm gonna close parenthesis and I'm gonna say enter. And now I have I was able to combine all those tables. I was able to keep the column that I grabbed from my previous table here. I was able to keep this column as the last column in this table, right? So I was able to grab the file name there and then expand everything else without hard coding the name of those columns. I hope this answered your question, Christian. Okay, so perfect. So let's keep going quickly. How are we doing with time for us? Do I have time for another example? Yes, Sigol, you are here. Excellent. I'm glad you're here. I'm so happy you to see you here. Awesome. Okay, perfect. So I don't see, well, if, if Faraz doesn't tell me anything, I'm assuming I can keep going. <laughs> so keep going let's keep going. Let, and let me show you a fourth example. So let me say, yes, on. can I keep going? Yes, yes, please. Yeah, okay, perfect, okay. So let's go with the third example. This is a little bit um, short. So copying, we are gonna have to, uh, plenty time for that. Oh, did I close my other one? Uh, yes, probably. Okay, let me go with three. Okay, well, let's get the previous row and bring it beside our year-to-date sales. What I want to do is get the sales for every single day. But unfortunately, how I get the reports, 
is just getting me the total, the accumulated total every single day. And I don't want that. I need to get the total per day as well. So you can do this with a formula, but you can you need to do it every single time that you have new information. And it works for one store, let's say in this case, but when you have three stores, you need to start all over again, right? So you need to get the total for this day and then start deducting this minus this. You need to break down that formula somehow. So for me, that is not practical because I can get information from several stores and it gets messy and I don't want to manually making sure or having too many, if this information equals this, then apply this formula. Otherwise apply this other formula. Like I, it doesn't give me peace of mind, <laughs> let's say, to, to make sure that the process is being done properly because if for any reason I give the information wrong to the formula, um, all my results are gonna be wrong. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna create a query that is gonna do the work for me. So I'm gonna go to data, and of course I prepared the query already just in case I didn't have time, at least I show you what it does, right? So this is what the query will do for me. And the query will bring the information for the sale, daily sales, G plus uh, to some in. So I will have the information for every single day. And also I will keep the year to date because I want to keep that information uh, handy. So now another thing that I need to make sure is that when the stores change, let's say I have store one here, and what is my store two? It's a little bit long, but up here. Here I have my store two. So I need to make sure that now the process will stop here and it will start deducting only for this store. So for this day it was $15 sale, for this day it was $16 sale because it's 31 minus 15 is my 16. 52 minus 32, 31 is 21 and so on, right? So every single store needs to start from day one and then do the calculation as I just show you. Same thing with store three. I want to make sure that it doesn't keep going, deducting from the total from the top, right? So, and it's doing this correctly. So it's grabbing the $13 for this day, and then it's deducting from 25 minus 13, is giving me the 12, and so on and so forth, right? So we're gonna explore uh, a little bit, something that I just showed you uh, based on the, the, the question that Christian had. Let me see, is this. So I show you a way to insert information into nested tables when we have two different environments, right? So I have a table where I have the information and then I have another table inside of a column that I'm gonna put that information into that table. So in this case, I'm gonna add information to a table, in uh, a nested table, but I'm not grabbing that information from the existing table that I'm seeing here. I'm grabbing that information from an index. Uh, no, I'm actually, I'm gonna uh, process a calculation within that table. So kind of I need a permission, I need a key to be able to be inside of the table and then use that key to open the door and then grab the information from the line that I'm gonna be um, selecting here. I'm gonna be telling Power Query to look into that line and grab the information from the year-to-date sales on this table, okay? So once I apply this, then we will be able to get the information like this. So that key is gonna open the possibility for us to make this calculation and graph the total, the 60, my, um, sorry, the, to graph the information from the previous day. So we'll graph the information for uh, this day is um, May uh, 31st. So, and then I'm gonna grab the information from June 5th in the next uh, row, and then for June 6th in the next row for June 7th. So, once I have this information ready, I will be able to deduct, right? Inside of the table, I will be able to make those calculations. So once I expand, the information is gonna be correct and it's gonna be grouped per store. Okay, so let's do that. So quickly, I'm gonna go here and this is just the table in my, in my current uh, workbook. So once you have open your you, when you open this file, you will have this table. You can right click and select get data from table range, or you're gonna go to data, get data, uh, sorry, uh, here, from table range, right here. 
from table range. Your Power Query Editor will open, and here you will have your query. So I'm going to rename this as live. Press enter. And the Power Query already changed the, the data type in here, but it changed this data type incorrectly. I can change that here. I click at this uh, square, and I can change for date. Or I can go to the formula bar as well, and I can see that the type here is date time. So I can just delete time. I just want date, and I press enter. So by doing this, I have just my short date, that that's all that I want. I don't want the time at all. So I'm going to um, hide the queries. So once I have this, I'm ready to group this information because I want to add an index column that is going to indicate the location of every single line. And that index will be connected, or I want to connect that index to every single day. So the first thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to group the stores. So I'm going to select the store group, uh, store column. I'm going to right click and I'm going to say group by. I'm going to group this by the store and I'm going to call this a column by store. By store. And then here, I don't want to count. I want to bring all the rows, right? So, and I'm going to say, okay. So by doing this, all the items that belong to every single store will be grouped on these tables. I'm going to click here on the white space uh, beside the table. And now I can see I have all that, that information uh, well organized, right? So now that I have this information, one thing that is very important, I already sorted this information in my table to be correct. But if you don't, you haven't done that, then just make sure that you go to change uh, when you open your, your table, you can go here and uh, click at the row and sort ascending. I want to say insert, but I also want to sort this, the date as ascending. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to say comma and I'm going to paste that. And now I want to also sort the date column in ascending order and I'm going to press enter. By doing this, I'm very sure, and you can see these arrows here on, on, on this little square, and it says one and two. So it's sorting first by the store and the second by the date. Okay, that's exactly what I want. Now that I did this, when I group, I'm very sure that I'm grabbing information correctly. So the accumulated sales are going to be correct, right? So I'm, I'm very sure that it are going to be in order. So now that I did this, I need to add an index. Um, column to my table so I can add a step and I can try to add that information there. But I'm going to do it here. I want to use my uh, formula bar as much as possible. And with this specific formula for uh, grouping, I really don't need any of this. So this is optional. And of course, it's better in this case to have it. So Power Query brings you the best possible <laughs> choice. But in here, what I want to do, I want to say that I want to add an index column. So I'm going to do index table add index column. So I'm going to add it to every single item that is in the pie store uh, column. That is the one that has uh, the tables. So right here, right here, it has the tables. Uh, what is the new column going to be called? It's going to be called index. And that column is going to start from zero and is going to have an increment of one. And I want that the type of that column is whole number, so in 64. And I'm going to go to the end. I'm going to press enter. And I missed something. I missed a parenthesis here. I don't know, something else. I missed something else. Here. This was oh, by store. Okay, the parenthesis is here, shouldn't be here. Perfect. Yeah, I put the parenthesis wrong. So the parenthesis should be the closing parenthesis for the table uh, index column should be before these curly brackets because the curly brackets is covering the whole um, transformation, let's say. Close parenthesis for the table group, enter. And now you can see that I have my index column inside of my tables. 
minimize this so you can see that my tables have been so, uh, grouped by this uh, store so now you can see that the index has been inside now this is when it comes very interesting because now is when i have to add that uh, calculation let's say i'm gonna tell power query to bring the index but using the index i want to bring the information from the previous row so let's go and add um, and a step here and just let me remember if I add this as a new column or I transform, just don't remember right now. I add it as a column. Okay, perfect. So now that I'm here, uh, and I'm going to just say by store and group. And just want this because I'm going to use this step. So once I'm here, I just want to make sure that I have this one identified, I mean. So I'm going to say table at column. You can add the column by add column, custom column, but I really get sometimes very confused with that one. So I'm very, I'm more comfortable by adding the column like this. And I'm going to open parentheses. The table is coming from my previous step. And I'm going to say comma. The name of the new column will be with um, previous day previous day that's that table will include the previous day and what do i want to do there uh, i each i want to add a column to the tables inside of that uh, by store column so a table table oh, sorry add column table add column this one and i want to uh, let me just move this down shift enter to go to the next line. And I'm gonna say that I want to add a column to um, the buy store um, tables that are in the buy store um, column. And I'm gonna say that the new uh, column is gonna be called previous day. Previous day. And what do I need to pro process there? What, what do I need to bring there? So what I need to do is, um, the each is not going to work, but anyways, uh, for now, just for my thought process. So I'm going to say that I want to bring from the buy store, what was that? Buy store. Buy store. And I want to bring the information that is in the index. So look at the index. So I'm going to give the curly bracket because I'm going to look for the location. So I'm going to open the, uh, the square bracket because that is the column that I want this to look at. So I'm going to say index. And then let me put this down below. And from this, and then once you find that, then bring me the information that is in the year to date sales. Let me see if I write this down correct. And I'm going to, uh, I think this is it. So this is the add column. And this is this. Okay, let me uh, press enter. And oh yeah, it gave me the error. Let me change this each because now I'm not in the same environment and I'm not going to be grabbing this from this table that I have in here. That is very it's hard to see, but let me change that for the function. And I'm going to provide the parameter. The parameter could be S, could be X. And now, because I don't, I'm not bringing information from the existing table, I'm not bringing information from, from the inside table. I'm just trying to make a calculation inside of the nested table. So I'm going to say, here is the key. And the key is going to open the other table, and I'm going to say enter, and let's see if that works. Oh, it worked. <laughs> so, but as you can see, it's bringing exactly the same information because it's looking at the index. It's looking at the index, and it's bringing the information that is in the year to date sales. So I want to bring the previous day. So for that reason, I'm going to say minus one. I want to bring the information that is in the previous row. So I'm going to say enter. And once I go here, now you can see that I have, in the second line, I have the 22. And I have an error here because, of course, there is not a minus one line. So to fix that, I'm going to say in here, I'm going to say try to do this. Try to bring the information that is in the previous row. And if there is no row, then 
Otherwise, bring me a zero. And, and then I go here. And now the error has become a zero. That is exactly what I wanted to do. Now that I have this information, I can expand and I can uh, process the calculation, let's say the year to day minus the previous day, and that's gonna give me the daily sales, or I can do it inside here. Let me create a new step so it's not that busy anymore. So I'm gonna say that I want this um, table transform columns. So I'm gonna do it within the with previous day column. I'm gonna open parentheses. The table is coming from my custom one, comma. I need to provide the transformation as a list. So I'm gonna provide the curly bracket. I'm gonna provide the column where I want to do that transformation. And the column is called with previous day. I'm gonna say, Comma, what do I want to transform there? So I'm gonna say each. So I want to, to transform uh, with previous day each. I want to say that anything that is coming from the column year to date within a square bracket, year, oh, year to date sales, that column year to date sales, I want to deduct what is coming from the previous day. So I think that's how we call day, the other column. So previous day, and let me see if that works. I'm gonna press enter. Oh, it gave me an error. And it says that they cannot apply the operators to type list on list. Let me see what I did here just very quickly. And table transform with index each. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna copy just in case is because I need to provide, I'm doing the transformation, but I need to add a column with that transformation. I cannot do it just right here, right? So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna modify my, my formula because I'm missing to add the, add the column inside of the table. So I'm gonna say each table add column. And what I want to do there, the table, the table is gonna come from my column with previous day. So that's where the uh, table is in every single line of that column, I'm gonna say comma, and the new name is gonna be daily sales. That's the name of that column, daily sales. And, and comma, and what I want to process there, and now because I'm gonna just be working within the existing columns, uh, I'm gonna just process or use the word each. So. I am not working in different environments now. I'm working within the same existing table. I'm gonna say enter and something was missed. And here, oh, again, I gave this wrong, okay. Enter. Just a parenthesis, I put it in the wrong side. I had to, uh, pro, uh, to provide the parenthesis inside of the transformation within these curly brackets. So now that we go here, yes, it worked. Now I have inside of the tables, I have a daily sale, which is the difference between the year to date and the previous date. So that's gonna give me my daily sale. Excellent. Now I'm ready to expand. I can, this is the column with the information that I really want. Uh, I don't need the other uh, columns, so I can easily use the table combine. So I create a new step. I'm gonna say table combine. Uh, right here, I'm gonna open parentheses, this is the table, and I need information from here with previous day column. I'm gonna close parentheses at the end, and now I have all my um, columns that are not hard-coded, and I have all the information that I need. And actually, now I can delete here today, or I can delete the index and previous day, I can delete those two columns. I select them, I press the delete key, and now I can keep only the daily sales and the year to day sale. That's all that I needed. So I'm gonna go on, um, home, close and load, close and load to, and I'm only gonna create connection. That's all that I needed. So, so you saw this process, it can be very helpful when you need to process information in daily basis. It can really just automate your, um, your routine, let's say, and you can be certain that the information that you are getting is reliable. 
So I can easily just grab that information, load to, I can load it as a table just beside the, the original table. I can say, okay. And now if we look at our store no, number two, we are certain that the information that we're getting there is reflecting really only the difference between the second day and the first day of sales in that store. Right? So that works perfectly. Uh, I really enjoyed this part. Um, if you wanted to bring a formula here. Oh, no, actually, no, never mind, never mind. So you want to grab a, new, uh, a formula here. You just need to be aware that there is a change on the stores, and then the formula needs to account for that difference, okay? So you cannot be deducting from the previous line in this case because you have a different store. Okay, that is my third example. I know uh, we are very, very running uh, probably a little bit uh, out of time, but I just wanted to show you, this is my la latest um, query that I used at work and it has been, uh, it has been saving a lot of time. So the person who was preparing this information here was spending between one day and a half and two days getting this information. How I was able to graph all the data and process all this information. It takes seconds now to get all the information that we need in a monthly basis. Okay. So before I go there, let me check if I have any questions here because I, I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> so um, uh, I see... I'm not too sure, but I see one question here from uh, Meti. Meti, I hope I pronounced that correct. I said, I think I was once told that if you update the decimals in Power Query, the people table pick up on that format. Yes, if you grab, um, if you select the data type as decimals in Power Query, the people table will grab that. So you just need to change the format in your pivot table to only recognize no decimals. But the decimals are there. But if you tell to Power Query to recognize just as a whole number, the numbers will be as whole numbers when you're working with your pivot table. You don't see those as decimals. So, so just something to keep in mind. Yeah. Um, okay. Who is? Oh. I hope you really find this useful. I'm really hoping. Um, yes, the training files will be available. Um, perfect. Yes, I'm so excited. I love, uh, I love Power Query. Love, love, um, uh, Victor. Really, I'm uh, so honored you're here. Thank you so much for being here. So I really love Power Query because it really has saved me a lot of time. That's why I want you, everyone, to know how awesome it is. If if you are not aware and if you are aware you keep sharing spreading the word because it's amazing so i know we don't have time uh, or, or, or please correct me if i'm wrong for us but i think we won't be able to, to check another example because it's a little bit longer but i just want to very roughly present what this query does and why it saves so much time so if that's okay may i can, can i continue for us yeah I mean, sure we have Another 20 minutes? 20 minutes, perfect. OK, so with this query, this is information coming from files right here. And let's say these are my vendors. And I presented this as a vendor for my original problem or my original challenge. These were employees. And we have hundreds of employees which have a GL account, a GL name, and it has pay periods. Uh, here and it had, of course, the double uh, headers. And every time that we needed to grab information from, this is not friendly, especially because it has those uh, merge columns, it has those hidden columns that are a pain. And I don't know why whoever develops those um, reports love to have these hidden columns <laughs> and these uh, merge cells. So it is very challenging. So the person who was doing that was doing this manually. And it was grabbing the, the, the numbers manually somehow, trying to get the, the totals per month, right, per employee. Uh, in this case, uh, of course, for privacy <laughs> uh, matters and for, for just practical 
use, I, I put this as a vendor. Let's say this is my vendor. This I have up to seven vendors or so. So I have up to vendor J. I have a GL account. I have a GL name, and I have papers. Let's say let's pretend that we're paying to this vendor every two weeks. So I want to know how much I'm paying to these vendors per category, right? So per, uh, and I want to see year to date, how much I have paid. But as I said, this is a challenge when I try to do this and have this information in a timely manner. So all the reports, let's say I run the report from January to April. Let's say I'm behind and I need to catch up. So this is from January to April. And then I have my other report. Now I'm going to start getting the reports every month. Now the report is for the month of May. And this report has a tab uh, that is called 05. The other report, the tab was called January to April, right? Every single report will have a different name of this tab. And in this case, all the reports will have two empty spaces after the title of the report. It will have the month on row five, and it will have the titles of the columns in row six. That is very important because that, that is going to tell you how you need to prepare your queries. All of them will have the hidden columns in the same location. So for that reason, uh, I can be consistent in how I'm going to process my steps. I'm going to close this. And this is the query that I developed. So if you want to learn more about this, um, I presented something similar in my channel. And I will be presenting this. Uh, example and more complex and more complex uh, i'm going to be presenting this later on so keep your eye on my uh, on my channel so you, you can see in my community tab so you can see when it's coming so you can take a, a deeper look on this so in here what i did i grabbed the information from my uh, folder in this case i have four files because at the beginning i show you how quickly to page but if i refresh now I will see only the existing two files in that folder. So once I have this information, then the next thing that I did, I transformed the column content and it went from, um, let me make this uh, zoom in. So, and I went from a binary to a table that is bringing me the information from my Excel workbook. And once I have that, and I did that with the transfer column, uh, trans table transfer columns. When I did that, I expanded the information on that, on that uh, column here. Uh, let me show content. So I did, I just click at these two arrows so I can grab information from the data column on this table here, from this data uh, column. So I go to expand it, and then I could see the tables on that, uh, on those files. Once I have that, then, Oh, I'm looking at the one that I applied the, the, the function. So let me go here. So once I did that, I start navigating, right? So I, here I have my data. I have my navigation. I expanded the table right here. And then my process starts. So I call this a start. Once this, this is here. So what I did first, I removed the four first lines because I don't need them. So I remove these four lines. From here, I, I remove these four because they don't serve me. They just have blank or, or information that I don't need or, or they are completely blank. I had to keep from row five because row five has the months later on. So it has January, it has February. So that's why I had to keep row five. So my start, what I did, I removed the first line. Then I selected that information that doesn't contain any totals. And then from there, I fill down the information from my column, that is column one, because before my vendors were all like this. And I wanted to make sure that the name of the vendors was linked or connected somehow with the real information that is the GL account and the categories and the numbers, right? So but I, that's why I had to fill that information down. Later on, I had to merge the vendor in here, I had to merge, what is that vendor? My vendor name was somewhere that it shouldn't be. What is that vendor? 
I merged column four and column five. Let's go with that. <laughs> so let's go one step uh, before. So I merged these two. And why did I merge it? I merged the GL account and I merged the, the real GL account because they were in separate columns. In this column, column four, I only have the title. And in the next column, I have the content of that title, let's say. So I just merged both and I keep them on once. I transpose the table. Let me make this a little bit smaller so you have a little bit more room to see. So I transpose the column, the, the table, so I, I could work with the double um, headers. I combine them here. I filter the empty columns uh, or the empty rows that, that say, let me go here. So these are columns, right? So we flip the table. Now the, ta the rows were the columns. So these rows belong to the empty columns that I had before. So what I did, I just filtered and I removed those empty columns. So I won't have them when I flip back, when I transpose back my table. So I transpose back and then now I have a cleaner scenario. Now I had to get rid of the nulls and these lines. So that's what I did, I filter, I unpivot the information so I can grab the pay periods and the months in one column and the amounts in another. This is how it's unpivoted. Now I was able to remove the zeros and to split the information for the month and the information for the pay period because before I had all in one column. Now I was able to split that information and have the, the, the totals. Oh, I didn't remove the zeros until the last step, sorry about that. So once I process all this, when I got to this point, that is my last point or, or the information that I need, I created a function. And the function is nothing but the same process, but I added the parentheses before the let expression. I added the parentheses to tell Power Query that this is a function. I provided me pa my parameter, that is my table, that is, it needs to be provided as table, and the result of this needs to be a table. So. I start from my start point. Remember that step that I said this is gonna the process gonna start is where I start removing the four lines on the on the top. So let's start from the start, and then let's change the table that I had there, and let's bring my parameter there because that is where my information was is gonna be feeding right. So and everything else is, remains the same. Once I had that, then I call my files from my folder that I did my parameter, just as I showed you last time, this is where my folders are saved. And then I connected my query to that parameter. So if anything changed, so I just changed my parameter and this will change automatically. So once I grab that information, I transform this column, I use the table transform columns uh, to grab the information from the workbooks. I expand it to grab the data uh, from the information from the data column from the previous step, which is here. So I, I grab the table, right? So in every single table and then, or in every single line. So once I got that, then the only thing that I did, I invoke my function here. So I went to add column, invoke custom function. And then once I invoke the function, I provided here, if I double click, I provided the information with the tables that were on my data column. And uh, as soon as I invoke it and I press OK, then my information was transformed. Let me move this over here. And actually, let me just, I should have, let me go here, right click, move to beginning. I'm going to insert a new step. Let's say yes, so you, I can show you. So this is the original information that is coming from the data column, right? So all messy. Once I invoke my function, it's all organized. It's all ready to go. And it's, this is for May, and this is for the months of January to April. That easy and that that fast. Of course, it took me time to prepare this query and to, to figure out how to create the function and all actually the process and then create it as a function. And once that that's done, I just use the table combine and then all my uh, columns were here, ready to go. What I did, I just went to Excel, close and load, close and load to, and here is my pivot table. That is the result of that process. And now every time that I have a new report, instead of spending one day and a half to two days 
to process all that information, I can just grab my files, co copy from here, and I can show you now. Um, I'm going to vendors, control V to paste. I'm going to just open them so you can see that it's exactly the same issue. We are having the same structure on the uh, reports. But you, you will notice that in July, I have a new vendor. I wanted to make sure that it's going to account for new uh, items, for new vendors, and for new categories. So that is July. Uh, I'm going to say don't save. And this is June. June doesn't have any new uh, vendors or any new items. So once I save that information there, I can go to my pivot table, right click, and I can say refresh. And now you can see that June and July are included in my pivot table with no time. With this, uh, it, this is when it really starts paying off all the work that you do in Power Query. Let me open just one file because I made some calculations very quickly, uh, very rough, how much you can save by using Power Query. So I have in here, so it's very hard to um, account for or to determine how much time you can save, for example, two and three, because that's depending uh, when you use it, how often you use it, how often you do that. So I'm going to leave those two alone. And just with example one, let's say with a half an hour every week, if you save 25 hours per year, and just let's say you pay at that person $30 per hour, you're saving $750 per year. It might doesn't sound, probably doesn't sound too much, but it's $750, bucks, right? So for this last example, if you save at least 12 hours every month, let's say you're talking about 144 hours per year. Um, that means 18 days per year. At this level, the person who is preparing this information is making around $40 per hour. You're saving $5,000 in that, with that process. Let's say, even if you save a $5,000 per year using Power Query per person, Imagine if you have 10 people who are using Power Query and are saving you $50,000 a year, and that doesn't need to be exactly a savings on salaries. You probably don't pay uh, over time. But if your staff is working less in entering data, uh, boring data every day, they are going to be happier. They are going to enjoy their job better, and they can focus in analyzing more. So you will have less I hope you will have less people leaving the organization because they are sick of doing the same thing over and over and just not finding that drive or that emotion in their work, right? That motivation. So that can be safe on that. Also, you probably you don't see the savings in the salaries, but then you can see that your people, your staff are starting to focus in strategies, how to get more sales, how to uh, minimize expenses, because now they have the time to do that instead of just entering and trying to meet the deadlines and just sending the reports, right? So that is that is priceless. So that's why my mission <laughs> is to spread the word. <laughs> so, so that's why I'm super excited with Power Query and just love it. And the more that you learn, the more exciting it becomes. In my case, I just love, love learning more and more because it really saves a lot of time. So that's all that I have for you guys. <laughs> so I'm sorry, it went a little bit far, a long longer than I expected, but I wanted to share as much as possible. So, so yeah, I'm, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. <laughs> so thank you so much. Thank you. Wow. And I don't see questions, though. <laughs> I think the questions will pop up, but uh, we will we'll be still live on the Zoom. We have to end it up the live from the YouTube. Okay, so, okay. you know, the wonderful session, uh, Alejandria, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. uh, for coming here and uh, sharing all your thoughts and uh, amazing transformation. Of course, definitely Power Query is a really a game changer at your workplace if you use it right away. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, and it's just a UI tool. You just click, 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 and then you try to explore more and more mm -hmm. and you get to know a lot of stuff. And uh, yeah. wow, it was lovely. So before mm -hmm. we end the video, uh, the session on YouTube Live, uh, Leandria, you have to say any last words, your last thoughts, and uh, we are going to end the live. Any any kind of a quote or anything, a Bill Gates quote or Microsoft, uh, uh, Satya quote, you know, anything quote from him, and uh, we'll end the session on YouTube. But it will be still live on the Zoom, okay? 
Okay, okay, okay. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. I very appreciate that you took the time to, to join me today. I know it's a lot of people might be working right now, so I really appreciate you took the time. If you haven't tried Power Query or if you are studying and you're not too sure, give it a try, give it a chance. And as you, as Paula said, just click here, click there, just explore. That's how I start. I start uh, clicking and exploring what the tools on the ribbon were doing. And as I said, my first query was like 30 steps, <laughs> 20 steps. I don't even know how many, but it's just trying to figure out how, how it works. And once you start feeling more comfortable and seeing the, the wonderful things that Power Query can do, start looking into the code, see what the code is doing and the logic that that code is, is processing. Once you start feeling more comfortable, you will see that you can do many wonderful things with Power Query and spread the word. And if you are a, a user, a, a regular user, or you, you are very advanced on that, Keep spreading the word because really, if I had known that a few years ago, my life could be different, very different. And I don't know why it's not so well known. So let's spread the word and let's make Power Query more visible and more just. So let's do this as just as pivot tables. Like my goal would be, like my dream would be using Power Query as often as we use pivot tables. So, so that's it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you for us. I cannot thank you enough for giving me this opportunity to share with your audience. I'm very honored to be here. I'm just amazed that you are here. I always watch your videos and like, wow, like, I, it's, it's amazing to see and work with some that you consider your heroes. And then you can see like, oh my God, I'm going to be presenting there. I just cannot believe it. That's so thankful. Thank you so much for us. Very appreciated. No, your yes. excitement is really priceless. You know. uh, thank you, Elida and Andrea. And uh, we are ending the session from the YouTube live. And bye, my friends. And I'll be seeing you soon. So stay connected on the meetup. And you are mm -hmm. going to come to know the, when is the next meetup is going to happen. Take care. Perfect. Bye. Okay. Thank you. Bye. From I'll YouTube see you. Bye.